What's the most expensive thing a city can build? Skyscraper, a brand new airport. How about a single mile of underground tunnel? In a city like London, just one mile can cost an eye-watering amount of money. Some projects have hit an astonishing £2 billion for a single mile. It's a figure so huge, it brings progress to a dead stop, leaving cities choked by traffic, desperate for a solution. Well, for decades, the playbook has been the same. Either build wider roads, which just invites more cars, or invest in public transport that's incredibly expensive and painfully slow to build as well. But what if there was another way? I'm Dave, and I'm going deep underground to find out what the future of transportation holds. Building just one mile of an underground tunnel usually costs billions. The latest completed underground line, the Elizabeth Line, cost a staggering 13.8 billion. It's only 73 miles long. Some sections cost over 1.4 billion for a single mile. But what if you could do that for a fraction of the price? What if the target price was, in fact, absolutely free, gratis, nothing, zip? Now, this isn't some far off futuristic dream. A company is trying to make it happen right now. And it's all thanks to a machine named Proofrock. OK, let's look at traffic. It's the one thing that unites almost every major city on Earth. It's a soul-crushing, time-wasting, economically draining problem. In London alone, commuters can lose over 100 miles a year each, just sitting in their cars going nowhere. For generations, the solution seemed obvious. Uh, I forgot too much traffic on the surface. Why not just go underground? Well, the idea isn't new. The first subway underground tunnel was built in London way back in the 1860s. Since then, cities from Tokyo to Moscow have built vast underground networks that move millions of people a day. So why doesn't every city have a sprawling subway system? The answer is brutally simple, cost and time. Building a tunnel is one of the most complex and disruptive engineering challenges a city can undertake. It involves years of planning, environmental reviews, and geological surveys. Then comes the actual construction, a process that can paralyse city streets for years. Giant city block sized pits are dug just to lower the tunnel boring machine, TBM, into the ground. These projects disrupt businesses, create constant noise and dust, and reroute traffic in ways that can make congestion even worse. The price tag for all this disruption is astronomical. Recently completed Elizabeth Line under London took over 13 years to cover just 73 miles. Obviously, it was delayed while well, scheduled to open four years earlier. And yeah, that seems a tremendous amount of money to lay some railway lines. Well, let's really dig into why traditional tunnelling costs so much. It's a slow, painstaking process. A conventional tunnel boring machine inches forward, grinding away at soil and rock. After digging just a few feet, everything stops. The machine has to pause so the workers can install the concrete segments that form the tunnel's lining. This stop and start method is incredibly inefficient. Then there's the circus up on the surface. You need massive, expensive cranes to lower the multi-ton pieces of the TBM into a launch pit. And that on its own can cost tens of millions of pounds to dig all by itself. Logistics are a nightmare. Every ounce of excavated dirt has to be trucked away, adding thousands of heavy vehicles to already congested city streets. The entire process requires a large, specialised workforce operating deep underground, which introduces major safety risks and drives up costs even more. Project management complexities and regulations can cause delays that stretch for years, with budgets spiralling out of control. Well, this is the barrier that has held back underground transportation for a century. The process is just too slow, far too expensive and way too disruptive. For a real revolution in urban mobility, you wouldn't just need a better TBM. You'd have to reinvent the entire process of tunnelling from the ground up. That is exactly what the Boring Company set out to do. 
Enter Elon Musk and the Boring Company, an enterprise founded on a simple, almost absurdly logical premise. To solve traffic, you have to go 3D. Since we can't build flying cars at a scale just yet, don't write that off idea, that idea off anytime soon. The only other direction to go is downwards. The company's vision wasn't just to build tunnels, but to build a fundament, fundamentally different kind of transportation network. Instead of massive subway tunnels capable of running massive trains carrying massive numbers of people, the Boring Company builds smaller 14-foot diameter tunnels this seemingly small change has an absolutely huge impact. In terms of tunnelling, a smaller tunnel exponentially reduces the amount of dirt that needs to be excavated, which in turn dramatically lowers construction costs and timelines. Nor are these tunnels for trains. They're designed for autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles. Imagine a network of underground highways where modified Tesla EVs shuttle passengers directly to their destination with no stops in between. Now, before you laugh, this isn't just a concept. It's actually working already. It's in Las Vegas. The Las Vegas Convention Center uh, loop is a 2.2 mile people mover system. Turns a 45 minute walk across the sprawling campus into a two minute ride. Built in about a year for an absolutely incredible 35 million, that's million with an M, it proved the core concept was viable. Now the vision is to extend that uh, into that Vegas loop, and it's got a planned 68 mile network with over 100 approved stations connecting the entire resort corridor, including the airport, downtown, conference centres, hotels, etc. To date, only a small portion of this larger network is complete, but the existing operational tunnels have already transported over 3 million passengers, according to the company reports. So what's the secret that makes this all possible? How does it actually work? And the answer isn't just the small size, isn't just the vision. It's the machine, first of all, that brings that vision to life. So what makes this technology so different? And the answer is proof rock. Proofrock isn't just another tunnel boring machine, TBM. It's a radical rethinking of what a TBM can be. It's the key to the company's ambitious goal of bringing the cost of tunneling down from billions to under $10 million per mile. That's crazy. The first game-changing innovation is something the boring company calls porpoising. Traditional TBMs need a massive expensive pit to begin their journey. You dig this massive pit, you lower the machine down into it, and it heads off parallel. It's always been done that way. Proofrock, however, can arrive on a truck, tilt downwards, and launch directly from the surface. Company said it could be ready to mine as little as 24 hours from arrival. In traditional boring tunnel terms, the lorries needed to dig the massive pit would not even have arrived. So Proofrock operates like a mechanical worm, burrowing into the earth without the need for cranes or costly launch pits. It drills at an angle until it reaches the correct depth. It levels off and goes ahead until finally it angles upwards and surface surfaces. No lorries or pits needed. It can be quickly loaded back onto the trailer for driving to the next location. And this single innovation aims to eliminate a massive chunk of the time and cost of a traditional tunneling project. Second, Proofrock is designed for continuous mining, where traditional machines have to stop every five feet to install the support rings. Proofrock is built to install the precast concrete tunnel liner at the same time as it digs bit longer. As it moves forward, it simply slots these rings in on the move. No more stops. The machine keeps going forward continuously, which dramatically increases its speed. Well, the stated goal of a proof rock is to tunnel faster than one mile a week, six times faster than the company's previous machines. Though this speed has not yet been demonstrated on a consistent basis. 
Well, the third pillar is vertical integration. The boring company designs and builds its own TBMs. What a surprise. Its own tunnel liners and the loop transportation system itself. Everything is done in-house. And have a guess what has happened to the traditional TBM big heavy diesel engines. Yeah, it's all gone electric. Much, much more efficient. And this gives them complete control over the entire process, allowing for rapid iteration and cost reductions. Then there's the waste. Now that traditionally requires hundreds of lorries to ferry it all away. Proofrock actually uses an awful lot of what they drill out and recycles it. Much of it is simply crushed, mixed with cement, used as ballast to make the concrete for the tunnel lining rings. <laughs> it's brilliant. The remainder is shipped out and used elsewhere as ballast for building projects. Little of it is wasted. Well, finally, we got the safety and efficiency. Proofrock is designed for what the company calls zero people in tunnel, ZPIT, operation. Completely remote control from a central control centre, which is safer, faster and cheaper than having any crew underground. Now, all of these breakthroughs, the porpoising launch, the continuous mining, vertical integration, remote operation, they all work together to chase that once unthinkable price point a high-speed tunnel for a fraction of the traditional cost. Now, more on that price very soon. Well, this isn't just about Vegas. The potential of technology has put cities around the world on notice, and a new conversation about urban transport is already underway. In Nashville, Tennessee, plans are moving forward for the Music City Loop, a proposed 10-mile privately funded tunnel connecting the airport to downtown. While construction began with an initial test hole in August 2025, the project is still in its early phases, with the goal of turning a gridlock drive into an eight-minute underground trip at no direct cost to taxpayers. Sorry, did you hear that? At no direct cost to the taxpayers. A lot more on that shortly. The concept is going global. In early 2025, the Boring Company announced a partnership with Dubai, the Road and Transport Authority, to explore building the Dubai Loop. The proposed initial phase is a 17-kilometre system. Why can't they just pick miles or kilometres? Uh, with 11 stations, with projections of carrying over 20,000 passengers per hour under the city's most congested areas. The ultimate vision is for a network that could handle over 100,000 passengers per hour with vehicles travelling underground at nearly 100 miles an hour. Other cities from Miami to Houston have been in discussion for their own tunnel systems, not just for transit, but for other uses like sewage and stormwater management. <laughs> the ability to quickly and cheaply build tunnels could open up a whole new toolkit for urban planners to solve some of the most persistent problems of the 21st century. By moving traffic underground into a scalable network, cities could reclaim surface streets for parks, pedestrian walkways, bike lanes, all while reducing emissions with an all-electric drilling machine and an all-electric transit system on completion. But two questions remain. First, why not just build an underground train? Well, let's tackle that one head on. There's several reasons. It's way too dear. We saw that with the Elizabeth line, 18.9 billion. The size of the tunnel that trains require to drive through is absolutely massive, and the machines are much bigger, so we're back to digging massive pits again and tunnels costing up to a billion pound a mile. A 14-foot tunnel won't fit in your lounge. Uh, designed for a passenger car is what is designed to do, and that costs millions. But move way beyond that, what happens when you get off the train? I can guarantee that is not where you want to go. Nobody wants to go to a train station. It just happens to be a waypoint, and what you do, what you find outside every single railway station, 24 hours a day, taxis. So the absolute genius with the boring company is the cars, when they come out of the tunnel, are not going to stop at a station so that you could get out and then get into a taxi. The car will emerge from the tunnel, it's going to take you directly to the airport or the hotel or the casino or the conference centre, whatever your final destination is. This is sheer genius. 
So, question number two. What was that about being free in Nashville? OK, right, if the tunnel costs just a handful of millions and every single passenger then becomes a captive passenger heading for a further tax, a taxi ride on exiting the tunnel, staying in the same taxi but carrying on, then the taxi revenue they've calculated is now sufficient to be able to chuck the tunnel in free of charge. That's what happened in Nashville. Tesla's just announced it's going to offer exactly that anywhere. Initially in the US, Tesla will build the tunnel at no cost to the town, city or location as long as Tesla can operate the cyber cabs, the taxis. That's a real vision for the future. And before the critics start shouting about full self-driving is 10 years away, the CEO of the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority would differ with you. He says, just a matter of time, and there have been no scrapes to date. Full self-drive is drawing closer. Well, the vision is clear. A future where you can summon an autonomous vehicle that takes you underground, bypassing all the surface traffic, gets you across the city in minutes and pops up at your hotel or your airport. It's a future free from congestion with cleaner air, more livable urban space. This isn't science fiction anymore. With Proofrock and the technology developed by the Boring Company, future is being built right now, one tunnel at a time. So what do you think? Is this the future of travel? Could a loop system solve the traffic problems in your city? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to stay updated on the technology shaping our future, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.